Hello everyone, happy Thursday. I'm filming this Tuesday since I have an oral surgeon visit. And so I wanted to do a video that I'm gonna get right into since it's just gonna be just a little bit longer, but it is on such an exciting subject. It is Jesus second coming, which I believe is nearer than we could know. And so I'm going to go over what the scriptures say, and this is not all the scriptures about Jesus' second coming, but enough, you know, to give us a, you know, a good idea and to get us excited about it. So the first one is Philippians 3, 20 through 21. It says, we are citizens of heaven right now, even though we're here, when the Lord Jesus Christ, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. He will take these weak mortal bodies of ours and change them into glorious bodies like his own. Using the same mighty power that he will use to conquer everything, everywhere. Praise God. We are already citizens of heaven. We're just going to be, you know, meeting. We're just going to be going there when he comes. So if we are here when the Lord returns, uh, we will actually not die. We will have our bodies turned into a glorious body like the resurrected Jesus Christ body. And so what an exciting thing. The next one is 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 through 3. And it says, you know quite well that the day of the Lord will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night when people are saying oh all is well everything's peaceful and secure then disaster will fall upon them as suddenly as a woman's birth pangs begin when her child is about to be born and there will be no escape so, you know, this is, no one can know the date or time. I can't stand it when I see all these videos of people trying to figure out the date and time. You don't know, okay? It, it's just, you don't know. Don't even try to figure it out. We can just look for the signs and that, you know, we can see now, but we don't know the date or the time. It's going to come expectantly like a thief in the night. It's actually not biblical to name dates and times, Okay. And then it makes Christians look like fools when we're wrong. And then um, in the next one, it is 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 through 18. I can tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not rise to meet him ahead of those who are in their graves. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout with the call of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First, all the Christians who have died will rise from the graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and remain with him forever. So comfort and encourage each other with these words so comfort and encourage each other these should be a huge encouragement when i'm on other christian youtube channels you know i see christians doing this all the time we all can't wait till the lord comes and and most that i see believe that he will be coming soon okay and then the next verse is uh first john 3 2 it says dear friends we are already god's children and we can't even imagine what we will be what we will be like when Christ return but we do know that when he comes we will be like him for we will see him as he really is because our body is going to be transformed in that resurrected body and we will see Christ as he really is truly not as a distortion of what we think he is but truly as he is. What a wonderful experience that will be. And then um, another great one is Revelation 1-7. It says, look, he comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the nations of the earth will weep because of him. Yes, amen. Because realizing, oh, 
It's true. Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, and we have denied him. There will be weeping about that. And then um, another great verse is Matthew 16, 27 through 28. It says, I, the Son of Man, will come in the glory of my Father with his angels and will judge all people according to their deeds. And then in Luke 9, 26, it says, If a person is ashamed of me and my message, I, the Son of Man, will be ashamed of that person when I return in my glory and in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. So, you know, he knows, obviously, who is a believer and who is not a believer. And so we don't want to be ashamed of that message. We want to be, you know, telling about Jesus Christ, leading other peoples to Christ, and looking forward to his return so that, you know, he's not ashamed of us. We want to be gladly proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ. And then the next verse is Colossians 3, 4. It says, when Christ, who is your real life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in his glory. Our real life is not now. It is Christ is our real life. So all the problems and you know, things and trials and tribulations that we have now, that's not our real life. Our real life is in Christ. It's victory. Um, you know, it is um, living with Christ. It is hope. It is a future. It's eternal life. So your real life is Christ, okay? And then it says, 1 Peter 5, 4, when the head shepherd comes, which is Jesus Christ, your reward will be a never-ending share in his glory and honor. So we will have never-ending sharing in his glory and honor. That is an honor to even think about us sharing in that. What a privilege because we didn't do anything to earn that. It was freely given by Jesus Christ. And then it says, 1 Peter 4, 13, these trials will make you partners with Christ in his sufferings. And afterward, you will have the wonderful joy of sharing his glory when it is displayed to all of the world. So he's saying we're going to have trials and tribulations and sufferings here. But it is making us a partner with Christ in his suffering that he had when he was here. We have to share in that with him if we're going to have glory and honor. So look at your trials and tribulation and suffering as, you know, a badge building, honoring thing that we're going to share in the glory of Christ. What a wonderful promise. And then um, just a few more verses. Um, let's see here. Um, so it says, uh, Matthew 24, 36 through 42, it says, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the son himself, only the father knows. So there you go. You can't make the times when the son of man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered into his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. This is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. So be prepared because you don't know what day the Lord is coming. So be prepared. Stay close to the Lord. Um, you know, uh, and stay in communion with him. Ask for forgiveness of your sins. You know, getting right with the Lord because we don't know when he's coming. And we could be zipped up just like that. And I can't wait until that day. And then another verse that says, um, Mark uh, 13, 34 through 36, it says, The coming of the Son of Man can be compared with that of a man who left home to go on a trip. He gave each of his employees instructions about the work they were to do, and he told the gatekeeper to watch for, their, for his return. So keep a sharp lookout, for you do not know when the homeowner, Jesus Christ, will return. 
at evening, midnight, early dawn, or late daybreak. Don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. There will be no warning. The only really warning is the, you know, things that uh, he told us to look for. But that's just in general in sense of like we're in the end times. There will be no warning like, hey, Jesus Christ is coming back in 15 minutes. So he's saying, don't let him find you sleeping. Be awake and on fire for the Lord. So two more verses and then I'm done. It's Luke 21, 27 through 31 and 34 through 36. Everyone will see the Son of Man arrive on the clouds with power and great glory. So when all these things begin to happen, stand straight and look up for your salvation is near. Then he gave them this illustration. Notice the fig tree or any other tree. When the leaves come out, you know without being told that summer is near. Just so when you see the events I have described taking place, you can be sure that the kingdom of God is near. Watch out. Don't let me find you living in careless ease and drunkenness and filled with the worries of this life. Don't be too concerned with this life. Like I talked about previously on a couple days ago, you know, keep living your life. Don't be filled with worry or trepidation or fear. Don't let that day catch you unaware as in a trap. For that day will come upon everyone living on the earth. Keep a constant watch and pray that pray that if possible, you may escape these horrors and stand before the Son of Man. And so how do you escape that? The wrath of God is not on you if you have accepted Jesus Christ. There is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. There's no wrath on us. We have been uh, made at peace with God. We have reconciliation with God. So you do not have to worry if you are saved by Jesus Christ. There is no fear. There is no worry. There's just excitement. And so he's given that illustration about the, uh, the, the tree, how we can look. I can even look out now and see little buds appearing on my tree knowing spring is here. And that someday they'll soon be, you know, filled with leaves and flowers and fruits and so forth. And so the, he had given signs of the times and other areas of scriptures when he says, you see these things, know that the time is near. Okay. And the very last verse that I want to leave us with is Revelation 12, 12 and verse 20. It says, uh, yeah, Revelation 22, verse 12 and 20. See, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to repay all according to their deeds. He who is the faithful witness to all these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And I reiterate that last part. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. I pray that all the time, that the Lord would come back soon. And the only reason that he is tarrying is because he wants people to come to know him. He wants the full amount of people to come in to know him. So if you don't know him, I, I implore you to come to him today so you are not left here. You know, you are not under wrath in the tribulation, you know, facing all those judgments that are talked about in Revelation, um, you want to be safe and secure with the Lord. I hope that everyone has a wonderful weekend. If any great videos come out, and I will do a video and give a weekend watch suggestion. God bless.